Good day fellow investors, there is so much talk about stock market crashes, economic collapses, currency collapses and I want to tell you a crash would be great for you. Now you might consider me crazy but I'll show you, I'll give you a mathematical proof by the end of this video how any kind of crash with stocks, with other assets would be a great thing for you long term and you would be better off to quote Warren Buffett, whether we are talking about socks or stocks, I like buying quality merchandise when it is marked down. Despite Buffett's logic, it's really ha hard to think that when the stocks you own go down, you should be happy because everybody's happy when stocks go up. When I see a stock that I bought go up 20-30%, I see the excitement on my stock market research platform, everybody saying goodbye, goodbye, but Actually, you should be happy when your investment goes down and I'll show you why in this video. Let's start. Let's take a simple example of the S&P 500. To make things easier, let's assume you only own one stock. One stock of the S&P 500 and your portfolio is $2,839.21, which was where the S&P 500 was when I was writing this article. That's all we have, one stock of the S&P 500. The dividend yield of the S&P 500 is 1.94% and the trailing dividend in points, if you compare it, is 55.23 S&P 500 points. It means that you get a dividend of $55.23 for each share of the S&P 500 you own. Let's now make two scenarios. One, where the S&P 500 grows constantly for 7% per year over the next 10 years, so just up, up, up and up. And the other scenario, when it drops 30% in 2019 to 1,940 points, and then it stays flat for the next 10 years. And you will say, okay, Sven, this is really crazy, but stick, to, stick with me, you will see at the end how you end up better when there is a crash. One scenario, S&P 500 crashing to 1940 points, 30% from the current level. And the other scenario is where the S&P 500 grows at 7% per year. And this is the result. So if the S&P 500 would crash, it would go to, okay, in this case, 1,900 below 2,000 points and stay there if it would continue to grow at 7% per year, it would go to $5,500 in value for one share. I cannot even imagine the panic headlines produced by the media outlets if the market would crash 30% during this year. Nevertheless, we should all be happy if that would happen and here is why. Now, the key when it comes to being happy about crashes is a dividend. So you reinvest that dividend and if you do it now, you get 0.019 of an imaginary S&P 500 share. However, if the S&P 500 is down 30% and below 2000 points at 1940 points, then you get 0.028 of an imaginary S&P 500 share. And this difference over time makes the difference between an investor and a speculator. And over time, owning more businesses thanks to higher purchases when you reinvest the dividend leads you to higher returns in the long term. Let's dig into the mathematics. So this is the value and number of shares after growth of 7% per year and reinvested dividends. So after 10 years, you have 1.21 shares of the S&P 500 for a total value of $6,771. However, if the S&P 500 crashes 30%, doesn't grow for 10 years and stays below 2000 points up to 2029, you end up with 1.45 shares of the S&P 500 for a value of 2,900. The total dividend on your 1.46 shares with 5% estimated dividend growth would be 130. Now, the comparison is between $6,771 with no crash and only growth and $2,900 for the portfolio with a 2019 crash and no growth. 
So you must be thinking, Sven, you might be well educated, but this is idiotic. 6,700 is much better than 2,900. So why would a crash ever be better? Now, here you have to answer one question. Are you an investor or a speculator? Are you happy when the prices of what you own go up, goes up? Or are you happy when what you own becomes bigger, bigger and bigger? When you own bigger parts of a business, when you own more shares of a business, where the dividend yield is higher and you can buy more and more of the good things you are. If you are a speculator, then you are always basing your future, your financial future, your retirement on the valuation of the market, on the market. And the market in history has been crazy. It is irrational. So it is just paper gains. You have to sell now to get those gains. But you're always thinking if I sell now, it can go higher. So you are not really an investor. You're a speculator. I cannot help speculators on this channel. So if you feel like an investor, if you are like Bob Buffett that likes owning businesses, then stick around and please also subscribe. Let's go into the mathematics of how even investors do better than speculators. Now, let's imagine that in 2030, so in the 11th year, the S&P 500 in the growth scenario crashes 40% and the S&P 500 in the no growth scenario with a crash in 2019 jumps 40% in 2030. The result for both investors with reinvested dividends is equal 4060 or 62 dollars. So given that it is impossible to predict how will stocks move except that the stock market will fluctuate to quote JP Morgan I firmly believe one should be happier when stocks go down than when stocks go up because it allows you to buy more of what you already own. So when good things are marked down, you buy more. And perhaps the most important thing, our little 2019 crash portfolio would have a dividend of $141 in 2030 because we own more of the S&P 500 thanks to the reinvestments. And the 7% constant growth portfolio would have a dividend of $117 in 2030. This might look like an unimportant difference, but the difference between a dividend of, let's say, 141,000 per year and 117,000 per year when you retire might make the difference between you having to sell stocks to finance your retirement or having the opportunity to cover all your costs and not having to sell anything. So if you wish for a better future, you better own more that will lead to higher dividend yield in the future, which might be enough for your lifestyle so that you don't have to sell anything. Because when you start selling your nest egg, the dividends in the future get lower, lower and lower and lower and the compounding actually works backwards. So whenever you see a stock market crash happening, if you own good things, you should be happy because over the long term, you are better off because you can reinvest those dividends. And this video doesn't even touch what 99% of people do, which is constant monthly investments. Your employee employer gives contribution, you invest in your 401k or something. So you are investing on a monthly basis. So you should hope for a crash of 80% invest on cheap valuations for 30 years and then just in the year you retire, nothing. You just enjoy the huge dividends you have accumulated by reinvesting at a high return on capital. So the next time you see a crash, the next time you see a headline panicking, how did something crash so much or so much, don't worry, buy businesses, buy more of those businesses and actually be happy because you can buy more when there is a sale. And this is typical. My wife, whenever she comes back, she says, oh, look at this purse. I got it at a discount. And why aren't we investors also so excited when we come home or when we are home? Oh, look, I can buy this stock at a discount. Yeah, I can reinvest my dividend at a discount. So perhaps it's hard to grasp at the beginning, but if you focus yourself on becoming a value investor, you will see how you will become excited when stocks 
drop instead of when stocks go up. Looking forward to your comments. Please subscribe if you like this month's mindset and I'll see you in the next video.